talk if they want to. Talk don't bother me. And well, welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul Girienzo with Ms. Jo Marie Lucy joining in the uh, studio and our guests, Conrad Ventura and Bill Kuva, Mario Montez was really the great drag superstar who reigned over the New York underground film and theater scene in the early 1960s, either 1970s, and it's hard for them to turn to this very day. So, welcome everybody to the show. Mario yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's to great be here. to be here as well. Right. We're going to have a great conversation today. We have a lot to talk about, and I just want to point out the pictures behind us, which were all done in 1969. They're all Mario. And they're brought to us today from Kenny Angel Davis. So thank you for the set, Kenny. <laughs> so why don't we start by talking about the photographs. These were all done in 69. This first one here is by Jack Smith. It's a photograph. One of his early uh, uh, shooting sessions that he used to have back in the, uh, around 1961 or 62 that I did a few shots, or oh, quite a few. You modeled yeah. for him pretty extensively. Yes, I did. Now tell us a little bit about who Jack Smith is, because some of the audience may not know, and we just want to keep everybody up on the same level here. So, yeah, I uh, I met uh, uh, Jack Smith through a, a friend, uh, uh, a casual friend that I met on Union Square Park, and um, he was telling me about this uh, photographer who made these beautiful images of people, and uh, but they were taken in a way that they looked like a work of art, or Art Nouveau style as well, and uh, I looked at them and they were fantastic. And uh, and he asked me to model for him. And, and you knew you wanted to do it. <laughs> yes, I did. And <laughs> uh, and I said, well, uh, and then we started talking about Maria Montez because he uh, and he we click on right away because he loves Miss Maria Montez just like I do, and I that's how. I, uh, now Maria Montez is a film star from the '40s. Yes. Yes. And, and she's someone after whom you took a name, sort of modeled certain things about your own career? Y yes, I did. Uh, when we did, uh, his, uh, after we did quite a few photo sessions with me and other people, um, he, uh, wanted, he started to uh, film uh, uh, Flaming Creatures, uh, which was a band, and I still believe it's still banned today in a way, I don't know exactly. But anyway, uh, uh, it'll be shown at MoMA, by the way, next Sunday uh, at 3, 3 p.m. Uh, th okay, that's this Sunday coming up. That's, mm -hmm. that's it, by MoMA. And, um, and it's at 3 p.m. and it's free admission. Yes, but uh, they... Uh, they uh, Conrad, can explain how that really works? Well, I think you just need to go to the website and reserve your ticket. Okay, so it does require an RSVP, but yeah. it's free to go. It's this Sunday at 3 o'clock, a screening of Flaming Creatures. And Mario, you'll be there, right? Yes, I'll be there. And then in the same uh, Sunday, I'll be uh, going over to the uh, Museum Moving Image in Queens. At, um, I believe that's at 630. Okay. And uh, uh, they'll be showing... Um, um, Screen test, uh, screen Lupe first. Lupe first, followed by screen screen test number two. Okay, oh, great. Oh. And these are Warhol films. Yeah, no, the no, only Lupe. one. No, one test. is okay. Yeah, the the Lupe is by Jose Soltero Rod Rodriguez. What happens? That Warhol made a version with is it Edge Sedgwick? Yeah, Edie Sedgwick. With Edge Sedgwick, did what did uh, Warhol production at the factory? All yeah. right, great, great. So you also worked extensively for Andy Warhol. Oh yes, I. And I you're considered his first drag superstar? Yes, uh, starting with those uh, uh, three screen, screen tests that he took of me when uh, Jack Smith took me over for the first time. And uh, one of them was eating the banana. And uh, what happens when I went to the factory there, I, I, I took my uh, cat named White Pussy and we sat on the, the, uh, the, uh, the sofa and then uh, I pulled out a banana from my beaded uh, handbag and I surprised them with, with the you know, with the banana, I thought to peel it. So it, it wind up, um, well, it got an award uh, at the uh, 1964 uh, Los Angeles Film Festival. And um, it's on YouTube right now. Oh, all right. So you can Forever, see it probably. on YouTube. That's right. Once it's up there, that's it. Right? <laughs> in, in blazing color. All right. Excellent. One of his, the only, uh, I only made another film for cult, well, that's only, well, now it's considered a short, but it was meant to be a test, really. But anyway, uh, he, I also made one for a world called Ori, uh, Mario and Ori, 
uh, around probably 75 or 76 and that's in color too all right. Excellent. Now, what about some of the other Warhol superstars? Like, did you know them all socially, or you just see them at the factory? I, uh, only at the factory. Uh, there was only one. Let me see if I can think of one. Yeah, Candy Darling stayed at my loft at, uh, when I had a loft on uh, 180 Center Street. Uh, and uh, she stayed for about a month and a half or two. So you got to know her? A, a little bit, but not really, because if, in the morning she would just be whisked out of my uh, <laughs> loft with either this tall uh, blonde guy or, or with um, whom I thought it was Ethel, but I'm not sure. Ethel Eichelberger? Yes, but I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Because it's so far back, I, I forgot. Now you know, I worked with Ethel Eichelberger. Did, was she always dressed in white and, and, and black? Uh, no, black no. Lipstick? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. It's not the right yeah. one. So. Okay. <laughs> That's Mother all right. Ethel. Now, I wanted to ask you, too, because you worked with a lot of film directors. Oh, yeah. Not just Jack Smith and Andy Warhol, although those are two that yeah, you're particularly yeah, known Rice, for. The late Long Rice, I did Chum Lung. Uh, and then um, El Elio Otitica came in 1972 or 73, and he, he, did a, uh, he put me in a film. Uh, my scene was shot at the uh, Flatiron Building of 23rd Street. And uh, it's part of the uh, film that he, he titled uh, Agrippina uh, R Roma Manhattan. And he's Italian? Uh, no, he's Brazilian. Oh, Brazilian, Brazilian. okay. Yes. Yeah. And what about Bill Vare? Oh, and Bill Vare, yes, uh, we were doing uh, 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 about a Mel Monroe called MM for MM, but unfortunately it was lost. Uh, I heard it was stolen. It was stolen <laughs> while he was traveling in Europe oh, with, with the ridiculous theatrical company. And the, 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 the reason, you know, uh, well, I was afraid of flies, so I didn't go. So, but anyway, that, that's something, that's another story. But, uh, <laughs> but I fly now. Uh, Mark Siegel uh, uh, persuaded me. Uh, <laughs> Convinced you. Yeah, back in, uh, well, not really back, just two years ago or a year and a half ago. Uh, uh, to the uh, the uh, Jack Smith uh, uh, f uh, festival that they had, and uh, and I, I was there. Uh, now you also worked with the Ridiculous Theater on stage doing right. live I productions. I did about six plays, uh, starting with with Vaccaro also actually uh, with uh, doing the live version of, of a Screen Test by Ronald Tavell, and uh, uh, my first role was that and. Uh, on stage, did a live for a couple of months, and then I did also uh, my first role as one of the nuns in Lady Godiva. All right. And Charles Aldo, and then we broke away because uh, we were starting to do uh, rehearsal when Queen's, uh, well, I took uh, uh, Conquest of the New Universe, but because we have ju just about started to break away from Vaccaro, then uh, uh, we renamed it, or partially tried to re suggest Charles to name it uh, When Queens Collide, because it, it, uh, I was saying this is a story about two queens colliding, one from Mars and Alice, which I played Alice, and so why don't we name him uh, just like uh, similar to that story, uh, well not really similar to that story, uh, When Worlds Collide, so just say When Queens, queens Collide, because in reality these two queens are colliding over their planets, you know, and, and the whole universe. And it really became part of the vernacular, that particular phrase. Y yes. <laughs> when Queens <laughs> Collide. And we, I, I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, I, I made my own costume. I made this uh, this costume with, with uh, uh, I had these two plastic um, art, uh, art Nouveau uh, wall lights. So there was slim, so I, that was well, my bra. And in the middle, uh, I, I, ma I made roof to put a uh, um, Hennigan beer, a slim <laughs> one, because we had one scene which I had destroyed uh, the, uh, the the Queen's Zanabar, I think, I forgot, from Mars. So at the end, I, I, I tear the bottle and melt her with it because she <laughs> she, <laughs> she got melted with, with, with the beer. With Hennigan. Yeah, 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 <laughs> with Hennigan, yeah. That's fantastic. Now, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your current career, too. We've done a little bit of background, mm -hmm. and we will go back, mm -hmm. but, but what's happened to bring you back into the limelight, and uh, when did this turn of events happen? Because I know that you were living in Florida for yeah. years, sort of in obscurity. I know until, uh, I think around 2006, uh, uh, Mary Jordan put a uh, 
sort of like a free, well, it is free on Google. Where's Mario Montez? I, has anyone seen Mario Montez? So if not, you know, if, give me give me a call. So I call her myself. <laughs> so Hi, she can, this is Mario. <laughs> <laughs> so she can with uh, with um, um, Ken Pennell, Pillman. Is it Ken Pillman? Mr. Pillman mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Mary Jordan, and they. Uh, they started to do the, uh, the, the, the film called the, uh, 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 Jack Smith and the, uh, the Destroyer of Atlantis. With your permission, we yes. could actually, if you, if you agree, oh, yeah. we could play a clip, a short clip, minute or two of your yes. film. Sure. All right. This is a big hit on YouTube. All right. Yeah. So this, this is, is on YouTube, time. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is actually one of my first uh, screen tests that I did for Warhol when Jack Smith took me over. And um, as you can see, uh, I started to peel the banana and uh, Warhol had no idea what I had in that beaded handbag. So I pulled it out and with my <laughs> white gloves, I started to peel it slowly and slowly. And he gave me, I thought he gave me a little direction, but anyway, he said slowly and slowly and I did. But anyway, after that, I noticed he'd been screaming bananas on away on the floor screening them uh, as works of art and then later on the Lou Reed and the Velvet Underground put it on the cover I noticed mmm mmm mm, who thought of that so that's <laughs> the source of the banana from Lou Reed's album that's right that's album. right he's that's the right. inspiration mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can see why <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that um, that headpiece uh, I borrowed from Jack Smith and their brochure and that actually that's a women's uh, a woman's uh, shrug. shrug. I was going to ask about the wig yeah. because it sort of looks like marabou. No, it, it's well, feathers. It's feathers. Oh, yeah. They were trimmed down. So okay. So, so they don't look very long. And that's what I use. Now, you're famous for doing a lot of your own styling for yes, doing I costumes, I makeup, costumes, hair. I put them together like this one. Mm -hmm. You know, I put it together myself. And also for helping other people. Yes, in the cast, I actually, uh, when we did the Grand Tarot, I believe I did all the costumes. Oh, for the whole production? Yes, for Grand Tarot. And maybe others that I forgot. Oh, and behind us, yes, mm -hmm. is the costume, which yeah, also... Thi yeah, this is uh, from um, the Grand Tarot. The Grand Tarot, I played, I played the Gypsy. And that's Car. a Charles Ludlum play. Yes. And, and also this costume was donated to the Smithsonian, if I'm not right. wrong. That's right. That's right, that's right. I'm glad you reminded me. Okay, so yes, tell uh, us about that. How did the Smithsonian get involved? Well, they came around, uh, they wanted, a, uh, I think, just one or two costumes when we were doing the Grand Tarot. So uh, I said, well, when we finish, we'll donate. Uh, oh, me and uh, Charles talked about it, and he said, you know, we agree on the uh, the color costume. What to give to the, the Smithsonian, yeah. And, um, now, do you have any other things archived in museums? Uh, what about your papers, your collections? No, no, they're in Orlando. Oh, okay, they're you still Orlando. have those at home. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Mark Siegel's writing, uh, writing a book about me at the moment, and some of it will be in my So he needs that for research, yes. of course. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Conrad, tell us, you've c collaborated with Mario on a few things. Why don't you tell us about some of those? Yes. Oh yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago, uh, actually in 2009, I started a project to basically restage or redo Andy Warhol's screen tests using the same subjects. Oh, interesting. So I started a process where s making a lot of phone calls, emailing, doing a lot looking of... Looking for people. Looking for people. And uh, I got about halfway through, and uh, so I'd done, you know, maybe Jonas Meckes at that point, and Ivy Nicholson, and... Ultraviolet? Ultraviolet, yep, you're right. And, and Billy, uh, uh, Billy Linick, name, Billy mm -hmm. name. Billy name. Mm -hmm. And um, I had Mary the good... F not, well... Mary, didn't she do? I'm, I'm just trying to put it in a chronology, oh, but sorry. basically oh. I, I ended up meeting you yeah. at uh, the symposium uh, up at, at Columbia. Columbia. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was an all-day symposium yes. for Mario Montez. Mm -hmm. And there were academics reading papers and you know, presenting their research, or you know, rabid fans in the audience. Including you. Including <laughs> me. Um, but I'd gotten in touch with Mark Siegel uh, prior to that, so I you know, had a little bit of footing when I came, even though I, didn't, I hadn't met you yet. And I'd also, uh, just before that, met Callie Angel, um, the, uh, who had, was working for the Whitney 
and uh, she's um, so between uh, you know a few people who were close to you, I, I ended up uh, meeting mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. and then before I knew it, I was on a plane <coughs> to Orlando, and we started a, mm -hmm. a long process of of uh, col collaboration process mm -hmm. in multimedia, so videos, photography, and now we're doing more performative or action-oriented projects. Fantastic. Right, so we're speaking with Conrad Ventura, we're just speaking, and Mario Montez, the uh, great uh, drag superstar who reigned over the New York underground film the and theater scene, a person who's probably the most oh, yeah, that's right. uh, influential mm -hmm. underground film star in the 60s and 70s when underground film really got its start in America. Um, Tell us a little bit, Mario Montez, mm -hmm. about your journey. Um, where were you born and uh, where were you raised and how did you wind up as a film diva and superstar? Are you well, a native New Yorker? No, I was born in Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, uh, was Spanish your first language? Yes, claro que sí. Yo lo mucho español. Sí, ese, el español nunca se me va a olvidar. Mi mamá decía, siempre no te olvides el español. Only Spanish. My mother used to say, never forget your Spanish. And I've done a good job, I think. Mm. Uh, That's excellent. And so you came to New York? Yes. Puerto Rico? Yes. And then... Um, Where did you live in New York when you came here? Oh, in El Barrio. Uh, in El Barrio. And uh, how did you go from El Barrio to Andy well, Warhol? Well, after I... Well... Yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I had to go to Jack Street first. Right. right. <laughs> but several s rounds of Union Square, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, only one. <laughs> no. Tell us the story of the movie. How did well, you meet the first time you met Andy Warhol. How did you meet Andy Warhol? How did you meet Jack Smith? Well, I, I met Jack Smith, like I said before, through a friend that I uh, was talking to at, at the Union Square Park uh, mm -hmm. one day, and uh, he was telling me all these photographs by uh, Jack Smith, and I went over to meet him. and. Uh, when I got there, I, you know, I, I was admired by his work, and uh, 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 I suggested uh, posing as a, well, mostly as a female, and it was my idea, it was not his, but, but he liked the idea as well, and, uh, and uh, he put me right away after the shooting sessions later, or Flaming Creatures, and we didn't have a name uh, for me, so what happened was he, he, uh, we, he gave me the name of Dolores Flores because he used to adore uh, the flamenco uh, 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 singing artist uh, Lola Flores. So he says, "How about Dolores Flores?" I said, okay, it sounds great. Well, until <laughs> until later, Normal Love. Uh, in about a, a, year, well, a year, within a year, we, he started Normal Love. So at, at, at that point, I says, "Well, we need, I need another name." <laughs> mm -hmm. So I says, "I I I, I like." I worship Maria Montez. Why not Mario Montez? How did you come to worship Mari Mari uh, Maria Montez? Montez. Yes. Because I used to love her costumes and the way she acted. And Tell us folks a little bit about her who might not have seen her movies. I read a little bit on Wikipedia, but I hadn't seen her movies. So. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, t to begin with, her costumes and jewelry, they're the most colorful and most... Art. That's why me and Jack Smith adore her. Or her costumes are done by, I believe, by uh, Vera West. And then sequences or just uh, color. An incredible know, detail, and too. Detail yeah. And gorgeous jewelry and the detail, too. Like in the cover costume. Uh, oh, just so fantastic. incredible. She, yeah. she liked over the top costumes and very romantic uh, leading lady type thing. Yes, and, yeah. and those gowns, uh, some of them you could act, actually, some women were, were wearing those gowns, those similar. Right, and copying her. So she was influential yeah. in yes, the day yes. from her movie. Yeah, role. and actually she started here in New York as a model uh, for hats. <laughs> Almost like I did. I started oh, that's modeling. so interesting. Yeah, she started, and then from there she went to Hollywood. Someone, I, I think someone discovered her, and they took her to Hollywood, and they put in these little short, uh, uh, I think one of the first was called Bullions of something. Sure. Yeah, but anyway, in uh, two westerns and short movies until... They saw oh, she's really great, yeah, yeah so on film. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so they finally because it is a particular talent, don't you think? Being on film, mm -hmm. I mean, I noticed in, in your bio that um, Jack Smith said you never took a bad picture, <laughs> and that's a really hard thing to do, I isn't know, it? And it's, and it's funny that someone else said that in uh, uh, John Duran uh, a couple of years ago had a, had a book called uh, Close Up, and it's a, it's a lot of different uh, stage movie stars and, and, and film stars. And I'm included in that book, and he mentions in there uh, that Mario has, he knows how to please the camera. Yes, and that's <laughs> a real talent, it is. So Absolutely. How did the, the uh -huh. next step in your career, story career, uh, 
uh, Mario Montez. How did you meet Andy Warhol? Let's, well, let's jump yeah, well, that. Jack Smith uh, met Warhol through John Vaccaro. I have a feeling, I think. Of the ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then, in fact, uh, Jack Smith was doing some costumes for John Vaccaro for the, uh, some of the places that, the, that they were doing in, in his loft or where, wherever they were doing them. But uh, and then uh, after that, like I said before, he took me to the factory and we started with, with a screen test that turns out to be a hit. Right what, away. Was it, uh, what was your relationship with Warhol? Were you there, were you there a lot in the factory? No, 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 I only went to one party somehow right. uh, with Jack Smith and that's about the only one. And that's where I met Maria Montez's husband, Jean Piermont, was at this party. So I went to him and I said, uh, uh, I said, Mr. Ramon, uh, I really adore your wife, and that's why I took a name. And so he, he said to me, don't worry, my friend, as long as you do that, you're part. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, so that must have been a great moment for yeah, you. Yes, huh? it was. I also went to one of the um, um, book signing for, um, darn it. Um, oh, uh, who? I think it was Viva. Oh, Viva. Viva, huh? yeah. And she's, uh, and, you know, I came in, and, uh, and you know, she's, oh, Mario, because I was a, as a male. Oh, Mario. Oh, um, and then she mentioned to me about Warhol. I said, oh, no, yeah, she said, do you still like, do you still like Warhol? I said, I, I don't know if I answered that or not. I cannot remember that. But they knew that, you know, that um, somehow, anyway, we have no. Interesting. So what, let's go. Let's move uh, fast forward till now. And what are you? Tell us, folks, what you're doing now and how. Because you're traveling the world, right? Yeah. Yes. At, at the moment, I, I have uh, 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 a Yale uh, next uh, next Saturday. Then the next day on Sunday at MoMA at six thirty, and then Moving Image. I mean, three o'clock yeah, at MoMA, MoMA at three. I mean, and moving, moving image, image at, at 6, 6.30. 6 30. Yeah. Is there any central website that has this information? Well, Momo's website, you can get yeah, a reservation to go. It's free of charge. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. Sunday. It's 3 o'clock. But you need to reserve. You yeah, yeah, but yeah, you do need to make a reservation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it's just you're going to stand there. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. definitely necessary. And currently, we did uh, tell about the the, uh, the face has... Uh, oh, that's right. Has two faces. Well, we, we brought Mario here a few just weeks earlier mm -hmm. than... than than he needed these events. for mm -hmm. these events. And so I um, confirmed a performance that we could do together. And it's for uh, uh, an online magazine called Triple Canopy. All right. The website's Canopy, Canopy, Canopy. And they came up with a green screen project. And uh, How six, fun. five artists and one collective uh, <laughs> did a green screen project for 250 people in the audience. And we got you up there in all your glory and you did a two minute and mm -hmm. 20 second dance mm -hmm. and in real time um, it was simultaneously projected in okay. the same space for this audience oh, beautiful. with this kind of exciting uh, helicopter mm -hmm. video trip around okay, New York City from the 60s that I got off of YouTube cool. and, w and what were you dancing to? A Les Baxter Les track. Les Baxter's uh, Atlantis. Right, found a Les Baxter track and I got that on there, kind of homage mm -hmm. to uh, Jack's Atlantis. So you can see this on the internet. Oh, yes, yeah, right now. Yeah, you're going to go to canopycanopycanopy.com, and uh, it'll be there. They also have a Vim Vimeo channel, okay, Triple Canopy. Okay, great, which you can check there. But Canopy, 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 to see this particular and performance. I to mention uh, another filmmaker actually came from Japan and uh, got to know Jack Smith. So uh, we, uh, we did a film. Uh, I don't know where it was a shot, but uh, I was laying down, and it, uh, it, his name was Imura Tahaki. Oh, this is in the uh, what year? Uh, probably oh, 64. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, mid '60s. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and it, it's it's on his website. Uh, it's called Face. Face. With two other girls. Okay, and how do we get his website? You just have to Google him. Yeah. Uh, well. Um, Ooh, I'm blanking on how you spell Taka. Takahoki. Takahoki. Yeah. Get out that Google. <laughs> they'll they'll Google. spell correct. Yeah, it's the Takahoki. most fabulous thing, right? Yeah. It's fantastic. You can see a lot of. So I mean, you can Google Mario yeah. Montez and see, see a lot. lot. A lot oh, of these oh, things yeah, will we'll come up. You yeah. Vain Victory. Yeah. My last play was Vain Victory mm -hmm. for Jackie Curtis. And that's Jackie on YouTube Curtis, as well. Right. Candy Dolly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. Fantastic. Well, now let's talk one minute about this picture of you as a man, right, directly behind you, in a little. 
so it looks like a swim outfit. Yes, that's I meant fantastic. That, yeah, I meant that. I meant, but this photo was shot by uh, Laura Rubin uh, in the 60s. Also 69. Probably. And then it, I, this is, uh, I used to use this uh, uh, little uh, outfit in the um, Turns in Hell. They had a, a, a underwater ballet at the end. So I used to come out as a male like that. Oh, dancing. okay, and dance in the yeah. underwater ballet. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. All right. Are you zooming? <laughs> oh, you're, you're, go, you're going in on that? <laughs> there go. Okay, there, there you go. go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I like the rainbow effect, st effect on that. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. And those are done by Kenny Angel Davis, who made this little backdrop for us today, which is so beautiful and fantastic to have, to see Mario in four different incarnations today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Angel. Absolutely beautiful. Yes, thank you very much. So we're coming to the end here. We just have a minute and a half left. So let's mention again at MoMA, there's a screening at 3 o'clock on Sunday. And you have to make a reservation by going to the MoMA website. Also, Museum of the Mo uh, Moving Image at 6.30 in Queens. They're going to be screening different films. The first one at MoMA is going to be Flaming Creatures. And I might just add that you've been nominated for a Teddy Award. The Teddy Award for 2012. For the Berlin in February, me Festival. and my partner David Krasner will be going to uh, Berlin for the uh, accept the Lifetime Achievement Award. Yes. Well, congratulations! Thank I think you. that's fantastic Thank and you. well deserved. Thank you. <laughs>